It's November 8th, guys. And I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, this year has fleeted by, I tell you. Uh, it's already uh, November 8th, and uh, we give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for blessing us to be here on tonight. Good to see each and every one of you on tonight. Would you please uh, bow with me in a word of prayer? Uh, I want to dedicate this class and this time of fellowship and uh, this time of study together for uh, to the family of Sister Elaine Russell uh, and the loss of her dear son, Kevin. Uh, we want to remember her and her family in our prayers on tonight. Father God, we come in the righteous and holy name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for this day and all blessings of life. We thank you for your health the health and strength that you have given us, Lord. Father, we thank you for the church of Christ and the salvation therein, Father. Father, we're praying for unity and love among the brethren, Father, that we might have a strong and bold presence in our local communities, Father. Father, we're praying now for the sick and the afflicted, that you will touch and that you will heal, that you will deliver. Father, we're praying tonight uh, for those who are in bereave, bereavement, Father. We're praying that you will comfort their hearts, that you will strengthen their hands, give them a peace of mind, help them to accept your holy and divine will, Father. Father, we're praying this morning, this evening, Father, we're praying that uh, you will lead and guide us now into our studies, Lord, Father, you know we have studied, we have prayed, we have meditated, Father, upon your holy and divine word. I'm asking you now to bring back to our remembrance the things we've studied that we might share with one another, that we might encourage one another through your word. We pray that your word will be known, your word will be accepted, a seed, of, uh, a seed will be planted in the heart of every uh, ear that he on tonight, that a great harvest of understanding and obedience will come forward. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the praise. It is in the holy, wonderful, magnificent name of Jesus. We ask it all. Let us all say amen and amen. 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 I see Sister Tori. Sister Tori got a new, new photo stat out there. God bless you, Sister Story. Good to see you. Good again, good to see all of you on tonight. Uh, we're moving on, guys. We're in lesson two. Our hope is in God's presence. Um, question number two, according to Ecclesiastes uh, chapter three and verse 11, and remember uh, that term Ecclesiastes, uh, uh, Kohelet, Kohelet uh, is the term uh, uh, which brings about the term or the word preacher. So these are the words of the preacher. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11, uh, the question is, uh, according to this text, what does it mean to have the world set in their hearts? And I apologize on our handout, there's a typo uh, on the handout. Uh, it says what does not mean, uh, and that should actually read what does it mean uh, to have the world set in their hearts. And of course, I'm going to read uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. And then again, uh, as we always do, and as, it, as it is my custom and procedure, and I do this so that we will, will not overlook anyone who perhaps have done some study, some research, and want to share or make comment, uh, I simply go down our attendance list and if I get to you and you do not have a comment, no foul, no harm, no embarrassment, um, you simply don't have a remark. And uh, we'll move on to the next person. But again, I do this in formality so that we won't uh, miss out on anyone who perhaps would like to share uh, from their studies. So what is it that the preacher says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11? The New Living Translation reads this way. He has made everything beautiful in its time. That's a powerful statement, guys. I don't want to stop and stop teaching that. But Sister McCullum, that's a powerful statement. He, God, 
has made everything beautiful in its time. And I'm not going to teach. I promise you I'm not. I'm going to open the floor in just a moment. But one thing comes to my mind. And, and if you if you look at it just on the surface, you'll think that, well, your mom is being just a little too, you know, too strict or too, you know, too harsh, or, you know. Uh, but mama, if she heard you say, if it was raining outside or snow outside, if it was thundering outside and somebody said, oh, there's some bad weather. Sister Faye, my mother was quickly to remind us that God does nothing bad. There's no such thing as bad weather. There may be inclement weather. There may be some weather that challenges us, Brother Nick. It may bring us some challenges. We might have to take out an umbrella or put on a coat, but God does nothing out of order. And the Bible says that he made everything beautiful, Sister Miles, in its time. He made it when it was needed to be made. He made it what it was needed to be made for. He made it like it was to be made. God makes no mistakes, brothers and sisters. He makes no mistakes. He has also set eternity. Here it is. He has set eternity. There's a hint, Nick. There's a hint. He has set eternity in the human heart. Yet no man can phantom what God has done from beginning to end. So the question, what does it mean to have the world set in their hearts? All right, Brother Marcus, you have a comment. Brother Marcus can't get his camera to work, guys, so we, we won't see him tonight, but we can hear him. Are you muted, no, Mark? No, I'll let I'll let other people on this. I have I have a thought, but that's that's okay for right now. <laughs> okay, all right, brother Marcus. All right, uh, sister Miles, you got you got a comment? All right, sister Miles, pass. All right, sister Connie. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? I can now. Okay. Well. What I have written down is whatever you pursue in this life, be it well, anything material, you will never be completely satisfied with the pleasures of your earthly pursuits or whatever, because, because God created us in his image, we will always have a spiritual thirst and hunger for him. Materialism and nothing earthly is going to satisfy that need for him. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Listen, you said a lot in a little time, Sister Connie. You, <laughs> you've done some homework, sister. Uh, you done some homework. You said a lot in a little time. I mean, you hit it on the on the nail. All right. Thank you, Sister Connie. All right. Okay, uh, uh, Sister Youngblood. Yes, uh, Sister Connie just gave my answer. <laughs> all right, all right, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. All right, thank you, Sister Youngblood. All right, well, Brother Jarrell, you have a comment? I do not. All right, thank you, Brother. So it's Ben Whitty. Are you muted, Sister Dinwiddie? All right. We'll go to Sister Deidre. Um, I do not have a comment. Um, okay. I didn't really understand the question. Uh-huh. Uh, I just didn't understand the question. Okay. All right. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. Okay. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, but next time, call me or text me and say, hey, Brother Miles, I don't understand this question. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> that's my sister, y'all. That's my that's I one of my sure best will. friends. Thank you, Sister Deidre. God bless you. You're welcome. All right, Sister Corey Mack, do you have any comment? No, sir. All right, thank you. 
Sister Bobby McCullough. Are you muted, Mama? All right, Sister Nolton. Okay, had to get off of mute. Yes, uh, just kind of going over it. First, I had to, uh, it kind of threw me off when I was reading. I put that it in there. What does it mean? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I knew it was a type error. Uh, in Ecclesiastes uh, 3 and 11, um, okay. what I came up with, life is just a vapor, James 4, 14. But okay. as Christians, we know there's something um, past this life. We have a divine um, awareness that our soul and life will live for forever beyond this and we know that this world is not our home so we do have something great waiting on us mm -hmm. and another thing it helped us to walk through challenges in our lives this uh chapter okay mm -hmm. that's it brother Mike. i got some more but uh well, look, look, you like Sister Connie, you, you said a mouthful in a little time, because uh, you're right on the money. You're right on the money. Thank you, Sister Nolton. You God are. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, yes, thank you. All right, Brother Ramesh, Odali, you guys got any comment? No, no brother. Just us. All right. Good to see you guys. God bless you. All right, Brother Nick. Uh, yes, sir. In my study, I got quite a few things here, but when the guy was talking about um, he set the world in their hearts or eternity in their hearts. Um, sorry, yeah, somebody trying to call me. Uh, I got here in every human, God placed a God-given awareness, and I underline that. Uh, that there is something more than this tran transient world. And huh. transient means lasting for a short period of time, which means that the world and all the material things in this world, it, it's, it's not going with us when we leave here. Uh, and with that awareness of eternity comes a hope. Hmm. I know we all familiar with hope. Because we had that from the last, the last lesson. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The previous lesson uh, that we can one day find a fulfillment not afforded by the vanity in this world. Um, also, I have here at the end of the day, God has placed a longing in us that is intended to draw us to the only one who can give meaning and purpose to our lives. The one who put that longing within us in the first place. And I put God's work is eternal and spiritual, not a material purpose. So at the end of the day, we got eternity to look for and not the things of this world. all I have right now. Yeah, that's the that's that that's more than enough, boy. <laughs> Yo. hey, Brother Miles, Brother Miles, you know, I, I couldn't get off of mute. I'm gonna give you my little comment. Can I do it now? Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Okay. Well what I was gonna say and, and your son said just about what I was gonna say, but he has put eternity in in, in eternity in man's heart. And that God has put in all of us the sense that this world is is not our home. Mm -hmm. There's more to come. That's what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I tell you, but I, I want to start right here. But I'm go I'm go keep going. But I I got to make a comment here. Um, listen, it it it, it, it I can't help but to to jump in here on Nick's and sister. Uh, McCullum's and Sister Knowlton, Sister Connie, uh, listen, you guys did your homework. You know, I like that, Nick, it, you gave a concise uh, 
short, a powerful, about four powerful, short, concise answers. You know, it's a God-given awareness, number one, a God-given awareness. That's good, son. And then uh, as you culminate what Sister Connie and Sister uh, Nolte, Sister McCollum says, you know, that we know there's something in us. There's an innate uh, knowledge in us that we know that there's something beyond this transient world, this transcending world. This world is fleeting by. Time is going, but we know this is not it. Yeah, somebody need to turn to somebody and tell them this ain't all, y'all. Somebody need to put that in the chat. I know Sister Faye is fake. It, this ain't all, y'all. Uh, there's some more. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, Nick says that this, this, this knowledge, this awareness, it gives birth to our hope because that hope is connected to that yearning for what is to come. Boy, you, boy, you got me preaching, Nick. And then he says um, that God has placed a longing in us which gives purpose. Good God Almighty, gives purpose in our lives right now for something eternal. You know, it makes me cringe when I hear children of God, and especially those who've been in the church for a while, when I hear them say, Brother Miles, I don't know my purpose. Brother Miles, I'm seeking for my purpose. You know, no, listen, your career is something you choose. Your education is something you go after for this transcending world, this transient world. That's going to be for a little. No diploma will get you to heaven. Can I have a witness here? No diploma is going to get you to heaven. No career down here will get you to heaven. Uh, Nick, powerful, transcending world. This world is transcending. Uh, it's a transient place. All right, but our our longing, that's it, that innate longing that Sister Connie, Sister Nolte, Sister McCollum has spoke of, because we're longing for this place, it gives, it births a hope in us, all right? And, and then, of course, life has, watch this, I like this, Nick, I don't know if you know what you're saying, life has an eternal purpose. We're living it now, Sister McCullum, Sister Kim, Brother Hollis. We're living it now, but if we live it, good God Almighty, if we live in our purpose, it gives, it has an eternal purpose. Although we live in that, and I didn't mean to go there. I'm so sorry, y'all, but I couldn't help it. I, I'm getting, that's my baby boy, y'all. I couldn't help it. God bless you, Nick. God bless you. Keep digging, son. Keep digging. Keep digging. All right, Sister Ann Butler. Well, Brother Miles, you just summed up everything Nick said for us. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. We I had to it. couldn't help it. it. <laughs> but yeah, after I read the scripture, and mm -hmm. even when you read it in the uh, New Living Translation, yes, it said everything God made was beautiful. So that mm -hmm. made me think about Genesis chapter 1. When God mm -hmm. said everything he made was good, not only was it good, it was very good. Yeah. And then when he said he had put eternity in their hearts, it mm -hmm. made me think about Jeremiah where he said, I will write this in the tables of their hearts yes. and in their minds. Mm -hmm. And so God, Christ has put eternity in our hearts and in mm -hmm. our minds that, like you said, we have something forward to look to. Yeah. 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 I like the way you just pronounced that. Uh, not we got something to look forward to, but we got something forward to look to. Yes, you gotta keep yes. your, go on, Suzanne. I, I see what you did. I see what you did with that. Listen, you got to keep looking forward, guys. That's the word there, Suzanne. You know, he's given us something put before us for us to keep looking forward. The devil always wants you to either stand still or look back. That's what the devil wants you to do. Uh, but as Sister Ann so eloquently said, he's given us something to look for, to, to forward that we might look unto. Sister Ann, were you done? Because I know I cut you off. No, yes, sir. I was done. <laughs> All right. God bless you. <laughs> Another reason, guys, let me just share a little bit with you. Another reason why I'm so excited about Nick, because he's call, he called me earlier, Sister McCullum, and he was trying to get some answers out of me. But you know, Sister Dolly, I'm a tough teacher. And he, <laughs> even though he's my son, Ramesh, I said, no, son, you got to dig. I, I said, yeah, and the one thing that was thrown off was that one word, not. And so when I gave him that, he took off with it. And, and Nick, I'm so proud of you, son. God bless you. I'm proud of all these answers tonight, but you all know that's my son that says he believed the Lord is calling him. And so yeah. I, I'm, I'm 
he I'm just excited. Uh, Nick, you're digging every time you come back, and I'm thankful, son. God bless you. God bless you. All right, Sister Faye. Sister Faye. Well, can y'all hear me? We got you. Okay. Well, when I looked at um, what was typed out, and I, it says um, the world set in their heart. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of my good friend. Now, she works at a hospital. She's a monitor tech. Been okay. there for 23 years. Now, she's got a house that's already paid for. And that's All fine. Right. But she wants to reach out and get this two hundred or $300,000 house <laughs> that she got to pay for. Mm -hmm. And she got this the new Mercedes. Uh -oh. I'm like, okay, that's nice. But my <laughs> thing is, okay, you working right now, but why are you putting all your trust in that job and that house? Mm -hmm. So you're you're making too much of a a god to about this house mm. and that car. And she needs to put her focus elsewhere on the mm -hmm. father. I have mm -hmm. asked her many a times to come to Bible study with me or either come to church with me. And as always, girl, I can't do that. I, I can't. I said, okay, then I holler and I go to church or the Bible study or whatever. But it's really <laughs> hurtful that she does not value the relation. The, um, after we're gone from here, she's not thinking about any of that. Mm -hmm. And that really bothers me. It really does. So I don't know what I can tell her or, or what do you think I need to talk to her? What do I need to say to her? Maybe she just needs to hit on on because mm -hmm. I would, I never thought that I would get sick and get terminated from my job and everything. You never know what's going to happen to you. So she needs to come up and do a thing about going for the to the father. So that's all I got to say about that. But all that right. just really so, so wait, bothers we, me. You and I will we'll continue that, okay? I'll continue that. Uh, I got some advice for you. Um, okay. And, and I'll talk okay. to you personally, all right? But thank okay. you, Sister Faye. Thank you. Thank you for jumping uh -huh. in. All right, Sister mm -hmm. Brianna. Um what I took from it kind of what really uh, most people are already touched on is give, okay. he's given us as she says some forward to look to I like mm -hmm. I like the way she says that so I'm yeah. taking <laughs> but mm -hmm. so we won't be idle he's given yeah. us a purpose because mm -hmm. you no know, idle mind is a dull workshop so mm -hmm. giving us what we uh, need from him mm -hmm. and the keys to continue to um do it doesn't work so we, we won't be stagnant in one spot and get lost in the world. That's what I powerful. Have. Powerful Brianna. Powerful in your first opening statement, I mean you laid it down. You know, this thing that he has given us, this innate desire, uh can do one of the greatest things for us. And I'm a living witness, y'all. I'll tell you. An out of mind, Sister Sonia, will get you in trouble. Do I got any witnesses on here tonight? Y'all ain't gonna help me. Y'all ain't gonna help me tonight. Sister Roche, I said, an out of mind can get you in trouble. And Sister Connie, to get you on the road to hell real quick. Say that. So, <laughs> thank you. And CC. you know this. And so, Brianna, that's powerful. Powerful statement. Um, It, it gives us something to keep our mind on. And that, and that thing that it, we got our mind on is moving us forward, propelling us forward. Thank you, Brianna. God bless you, honey. God bless you. All right, so Sasanya. Sorry, I had it on you. Um, from, from my studies, um, I had said that... Um, First of all, I've always thought about like Ecclesiastic, this verse, 
you know, um, as far as the different seasons and there's always a purpose. God has always given us a purpose and everything um, happens for a reason, you know, season or lifetime. And so um, going back to, like someone has stated earlier, you know, uh, he has put eternity in our heart, right? Um, mm -hmm. The human heart is an expression representing the mind, soul, or spirit of a person. Mm -hmm. But when we have the heart of eternity that God has placed, he's, he's eternal, right? And so mm -hmm. if we have the, the heart of man, I mean, if we have the heart of God, right, that means that we have an eternal value, right? Mm -hmm. We just trust, you know, um, you know, his plan, right? And not go after the material things, like somebody said, which is like a vapor, a mist, it goes away. So it's like anytime we chase after the worldly things, it never satisfies us because after you, as people say, when you get that high, right, um, you got to continue to get something higher and higher. So it's the same thing with our flesh when we run after these mm -hmm. worldly things, right, instead of seeking God, um, you know, for the things that's going to have us to spend eternity with him. And I said, mm -hmm. with God, no matter what season we are in with him, we can always mm -hmm. be victorious over all the trials and tribulations in our life if we just trust his plan. So, um, you know, that's what I got when I was studying. So, um, Ooh, we, I wish I could take credit for y'all, y'all good students, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sonia, powerful, honey. You know, it gives us eternal value. What a powerful statement. What a powerful statement, Sister McCullough, that this, that this innate desire, this, this yearning, it gives us an eternal value. That's why the child of God should never be questioning themselves. They should never be questioning purpose. They should never be questioning um, uh, work, the work, their value. Jesus gave his life for us. What greater value can we have that the son of God will lay down his life for us? Powerful, Sister Sonia. It gives us eternal value. And then I like this other powerful statement. It gives us victory. This yearning, this, this, this innate yearning gives us victory. Here it is, Sister Dinwiddie, in every season of life. There should never, a, a child of God should never remain, Sister Veronica, in depression. Do we fight it? Yes. Do we meet it? Yes. Do we go head on with it? Yes. But that eternal purpose inside of us, that eternal desire should bring us through those trials. It, it should be the, the motivation that gets us through the storms of life. Because we know, as Sister Ann said, he put some in front of us to keep us looking forward. God bless you, Sister Sonia. Brother Junius, you got a you got a comment you want to make? No, I have no comment at this time. All right, all right. I thought you were gonna say amen, like you did last <laughs> time. See, just say I, amen, brother. I've said that several times already. <laughs> God bless you. All right, Sister Roche. <laughs> okay thank you sister roche all right god bless you all right sierra um it's kind of piggybacking off of what everyone else said about how god is he gave us okay let me start over as we all know God created all of us. Uh -huh. Even those who don't believe in him, we know that he created us. Wow. So us as believers, we know that we know that God, like when we when we leave this this when we leave the earth, we mm -hmm. know that there is life after, you know, we're not like brother Nick and everybody else said, we're not gonna be able to take anything with us. Right? Because it can't get us into heaven. Mm -hmm. But what kind of what I kind of picked up is that like even non-believers know that there is something after death. 
Mm. Mm. And whether they believe in God or not, mm. they know that it's something that's good. Like they know that something is going to happen after they die. Mm. And I feel like that ties in because God placed eternity in all of our hearts. <laughs> That's all I got. That's enough. That's enough, girl. Going to give yourself a high five. I like that, CC. Um, even the non-believers, because God created who? He created all things, Sister Connie. He created all, all. And even the non-believers who don't confess God, Brother Nick, they know there's something else. Even though they don't understand, Sister Ann, Sister Roche, they don't even understand, Jarrell. But they know because God has put that in the heart of all, every man. God bless yes. you, CC. Thank you so much. Boy, I wish I could take credit for all these good students. God bless you, CC. All right. Well, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> this is what she said is exactly why I didn't want to start. Because I didn't right. want to speak negative about what's going on, I wanted everybody to talk about. But yes, everybody, he he has gifted us with the awareness that there's more. <laughs> but, and as Sierra said, everybody knows it, even people mm -hmm. that don't believe in him. But mm -hmm. how will we function based on that? And I think that we get farther and farther away from it. People that believe mm -hmm. and people that don't believe get mm -hmm. farther. We can fight against fight against that. It's hard to live without purpose and hope. It's, it's, it's hard to live like that. Yes, sir. And we get farther and farther away from it. And I'm a, I'm a witness to it because I've been there before that mm -hmm. even though I'm aware, I'm farther and farther away in my life. Mm -hmm. I, start, I start functioning like there's not much else. There's mm. this. Everything is about now. Everything is about, you know, and so if we're not careful, even though we say that we believe that and, you know, like they used to say, you can make your mouth say anything. Wow. But if you function like that, like you mm -hmm. truly believe that there's more than here, mm -hmm. or are you just living for what's right here? Because there's a big, big difference in, in right. that and that's the part that was conflicting me when i was listening to it i said yeah i know that and that's what should happen but a lot of times we don't right right thank you thank you brother uh marcus uh that's what the word to do it 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 it'll pull on you till you have to make that remark thank you marcus thank you sir all right brother Jalen, professor Jalen. You there, Jalen? All right, might have to come back to Jalen. We know he'd be on the move on Wednesdays. All right, Brother Hollis. Hi. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I uh, definitely was listening to everybody. I got up to just try to get some water, but... <clears throat> um, <laughs> um, I don't know. These these verses really should give us all great joy in the Lord. Mm. Um, one of the um, maybe the starting parts of this, uh, starting at verse number 10, um, kind of opened up my mind to a lot of it. And it says, I was thinking like, as we live and breathe, now, this Bible, this New King James Version that I have, it says for these verses, God predetermines the conditions of life. And so just looking at those verses and reading that statement, which not, was not in the scriptures, that God determines the conditions of life. Boy, that just, just lifted me up, just gave me great hope mm -hmm. and in knowing that God determines the conditions of life and he's looking he's looking at us he he's he's prepared us he's the one guiding the way and many times we don't always see it but if we put our trust in god we can be a great benefit we can be a part of it 
and we will be a part of it and we can do the things and see the love of God that he's given us in our lives. Thank you, Brother Spence. Powerful. Thank you so much. I, I like that part, you know, that beginning statement that, that this, this innate desire, this longing, this, uh, this knowledge that there's something else should produce great joy in the life of the believer. Great joy. I like that. Thank you, Brother Hollis. So, Skim. Um, yes, what I took from it is that God has set eternity in man's heart. Um, eternity is also in our hearts because we are made in the image of an eternal God. And I also agree with Sierra because every culture has their own tradition, custom, or ways of, of thinking of eternity in that reflects biblical truth. So every culture has mm -hmm. its own traditions or, cu or customs or ways of thinking of biblical mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is that God designed us with a hunger that can only, that only God can suffice. So even mm. though man is a sinner, the Lord sets eternity deep within man's heart mm. Mm. i hope y'all get this do you all see why we take the time to go through and listen to those who have studied and those who meditate and pray because we we're, we're now on the 23rd person and and some and everybody is bringing somewhat of the same but yet God gives them a revelation or another another answer, another principle, another piece of wisdom. Yeah. And so, Kim, I like that. This hunger, Sister Satchin, this eternity can only be sufficed by God. Powerful, Sister Kim. Powerful. Thank you so much. All right, Sister Tori, you got to come in. All right, we'll move from Sister Tori. Sister Veronica, good to see you out there, Sister V. You got a comment? No, I don't have a comment. Thanks. All right, God bless you. Give our love to, to my, my, my boy. Let him know we're praying for him every morning. Praying for him every morning. Thank and you. As well. And you, good to Appreciate hear your voice. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. All right, uh, Brother David McKinney. Um, put had in my notes that there's a season for everything and God allows us to go through certain things, whether it's good or bad for us you to learn. You in my notes, David. You in my notes already. <laughs> go ahead, Doc. It allows us to go go through through certain things so we so we can learn from it and and understand that he's in control of everything. Um, whether we're doing good, uh, whether you know we're producing good fruits, uh, it's still a blessing from him, or even if we're going through a hard time he's still helping us get through those through those tough times so we can have in our hearts um the ability to always give him honor and glory no matter what the situation is god bless you powerful powerful yes there is a season in all things and god is still helping us through that with this with this innate desire he's helping us he's bringing us through it thank you brother david it says i drawing it close to you Nah, she getting uh getting ready for for work right now. All right, all right. How's little Max doing? Is he better? Yeah, he's doing a lot better. They're trying to go to the gym in a little bit. All right, well, he's doing better. God bless you. All right, thank you, brother David. All right, uh, brother Carlos. Hang on. <laughs> oh. You want to go first? He, he, he said he was listening. I'm sorry we missed like 15 minutes because we've had trouble with our internet for two old days. Okay. Do you have a comment, Sister Nancy? Um, I wasn't sure where you were studying at tonight. All right. We're in Ecclesiastes chapter three, uh, chapter three, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. If y'all want to come back late and give a comment, just let me know. All right. All right. 
All right, Professor Satcher is on the line. <laughs> Okay, Professor Sash is trying to get this phone to work. <laughs> and I tell you, Brother Miles, I have just heard so much, all of the comments, just like, yeah. Lord. And then when you came in on after Nick, and I tell you, did, like, you could have just let Nick go on and finish the class. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we could have just listened, just <laughs> listened to him. But to hear, you know, the wisdom of, you know, in the comments of just, Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you for, you know, giving us this world. It says, um, yeah. I'm going to just probably mostly read, you know, what I, I, I have uh, written. It says, God has made everything beautiful in its own time. Mm -hmm. He has planted eternity in human hearts. And Brother mm -hmm. Miles, you know, you we, we talked about, you know, the um, the creation, how God created everything just perfect in each day of creation. And everything he created, he said, it is good. Mm -hmm. And then he created man and said, it's very, very, very good. Yeah. Because God put man... Could, we just can't even imagine the beauty of the Garden of Eden. Just perfect for men to just do nothing but enjoy, enjoy, and, and enjoy, you know, forever until man took his, you know, attention away from what God, you know, had intended for him. Because you, you told us that God didn't want us to know good and evil. Right. And man, man messed up when he, you know, ate the fruit that God forbid him not to eat. Says, um, we can't see um, the whole scope of God's work from uh, beginning to end here on this earth. But we see things that God has created and how beautiful it is. The beauty of this world only represents just a small fraction of the eternal beauty that is waiting for us. Mm -hmm. But God has it in such a way that we can understand fully what it is, what it will be like. That's why we long to be with God because right now, you know, we can't see everything in the magnitude and understand it, how great God's work is. Mm -hmm. But um, our earthly dwelling is incomplete but if we hold on to God and if we're obedient to him then in the end God is going to help us see things completely as he sees it so we're just waiting and longing longing to be like it was back you know when God first created everything so you know what? Nothing but good and peace and happiness and joy. You went out, Sister Satcher. Okay, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Hey, Amen. Okay, Sister Satcher, we lost your volume some kind of way. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me. We hear you now. Okay. Well, I, I, and I don't know where you lost me at. <laughs> yeah, you were you were culminating when you were talking about th this hope causes us to trust God in all things. Okay, and you know we just we, we we can only you know partially understand the magnitude of God' great works here on earth, but uh, if we are obedient and faithful to God, then you know. Uh, he will help us to see uh, things in completeness as he as he sees it. And our longing is to just, you know, be in that perfect state with God where he really created us for and intended for man um, to be. Mm -hmm. Powerful, Sister Satcher. Powerful. And I, I like that. I like that last part that you really... Um, uh, brought it brought it home when uh, you talk about that latter part of verse 11 
And I do apologize. I told you all I read from the New Living Translation. I apologize. That was the New International Version, the NIV that I was reading from. I apologize. Uh, but of course, it's the same. It gives the same message, a uh, little wording different. But so, Sacha, I like that, that this, this, this hope, um, this yearning, this, this, this thing that God has set in our heart, uh, it causes us to remain obedient. And if we are obedient, you dealt with that last part. Um, right now, even though man knows that there's something else, he cannot see the full scope of God, what God has for us. And if we hold on to that mm -hmm. obedience, Sister Satcher, you made it, you made it clear. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just like what Sister Kim said, only God can suffice. He can only yes. suffice that eternal hope. And so we, we will see it in the end as God sees it if we remain mm -hmm. faithful. God bless you, Sister yes, Satcher. Yeah. Boy, I tell y'all mm -hmm. some, some good students. God bless you. All right. It's because of our teacher. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Satcher. <laughs> That's All right, true. Sister Clardy. <laughs> Sister Clardy, I see you off mute, Sister Clardy. I know you got something to say. Are you there, Sister Clardy? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. All right, it's on you. I don't have anything. All right. Thank you, Sister Clardy. All right, Selena. You have a comment, Selena? Um, not tonight. All right. God bless you. Good to hear your voice. Good to see you. All right. This, is, this is Nancy. Hey, Sister Nancy. All right. Come on. Yeah, I know. I they always talk about the streets of gold, but I know for me. I wouldn't care if it was streets of dirt. To be with God is the most important thing. <laughs> to be with Jesus. Just, uh, I really wouldn't care, you know? Yes. That's not the most important part to me. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Nancy. I'm with you, Sister Nancy. I don't have to have a mansion. I'm like Brother Jewel Hutton, an old preacher who lived to be 95 years old. He said, just give me a cabin. In the corner of Glory Land, I don't, I don't have to have a mansion. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Nancy. Uh, is there anyone else uh, that would like to make a comment that we have not heard from tonight? Yeah, All right, the Doc. Okay, Jarrell, come on with it, Doc. Come on. So, uh, sorry, I wasn't prepared for this, but um, so my comparison to this would basically be uh, with Moses. I mean, I know that he was a he was a believer, and he had to basically get that instilled in, into his heart, and not only his heart, but the Israelites' heart too, um, okay. because I mean, he just didn't uh, believe that he could give that message. And it's crazy how God has everything uh, arranged for us already. So He told them, like, "Hey, you know, if uh, they don't believe you, then do this. If they don't believe you, do this, and do this, and do this, and do this, and, do this, and so forth." So just having that faith and that uh, and the heart to do what he did to bring his people out of there, you know what I'm saying, to have a place to go with that land of uh, flowing with milk and honey, uh, that just shows that he just believes and he understood that God has a purpose for everything. All right. All right. I like that comparison. I see. I see what you did. I see what you did. Uh, that, because Moses had, he, he knew that there was a purpose God had for him. And that purpose was driving him, uh, even when he came up against the obstacles of those hard-headed Israelites. Lord have mercy. Hard-headed. Uh, but yet Moses knew his assignment. And that's what we got to know, brothers and sisters. We got to understand the assignment. And that's why Brother Miles labor to remind you all the time that this thing we call Christianity, this thing that we call worship, it's for us, but it's not about us. And, and that's why I get you to understand God has purposed all things, all things. And listen, God don't need nobody to help him to remember to bring something inside of worship that God ain't never talked about, never mentioned, never asked for it, never commanded it. He don't need you to remind him. He didn't forget nothing. He don't need you to rewrite the script. He don't need you to rename the church. 
He doesn't need you to re rename the the uh, 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 reinvent the the plan of salvation. God designed all things in its time, and when He's done with it, system column, it's beautiful. It's complete. It's what we need for the now. It is a good God Almighty. It sustains us for the now, but it gives us the empowerment and it gives us the power and it gives us the unction to keep moving forward to that which we may not clearly understand, but we know it's there. It is for us. Somebody need to put that in the chat. He did it. He did it for me. It's already done. All we have to do is so many have said, and I can go through my notes and name them all. So many have said, we got to remain obedient. We got to remain faithful. And in the end, God will then reveal to us all that he has for us. Uh, I was a little yes. uh, uh, nervous with Brother Spence and Brother David uh, because they started going back. And that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you back next week You need for your homework. Uh, go back to Ecclesiastes 3, begin that verse 1. I'm going to take you back to verse 1 because I want you to see the progression. I want you to if, see the progression of this text, why, why verse 11 is so powerful. And I wanted you to feel the weight of this uh, pericope, this text. And, and so I'm going to take you back to verse 1, and I'm going to show you how it's a progression uh, to, where, to why this verse 11 is so powerful to us. Uh, we'll get a better understanding when we understand the progression of the text. So for homework, I want you to read uh, verses 1 through 10, Ecclesiastes 3, uh, verse 1 through 10. I want you to read that. Um, let me see what else I got for you. Um, we're going to deal with that word world. Um, you may want to do your little homework, do your research. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say little. <laughs> do your homework on the word world uh, in, in Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. King James says he set, set the world in their heart because you're going to understand and find out it's not the world uh, that includes this cosmos and, and includes the waters and the mountains and the animals and man. Uh, that's a different world there. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. So look at that word world. Uh, we'll deal with that a little bit more. Um, uh, and we'll talk about the human heart uh, some. We'll talk about that. Let me see what else I got for you. Um, I'm going to press a little bit more on what Sister Kim and what Sister Satch said about the end, that latter part of verse number 11. We're going to talk about that uh, a little bit more. You want to read uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 9 through 11, 1 Peter chapter 2, 9 through 11. I'm going to just hit on that a little bit. Um, and then also Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 20. Philippians, so I'm sorry, Jalen. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was having trouble with my headphones, but I can still uh, uh, speak. Okay, but, give me um, one second. Give me one second. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yes, sir. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. I want you to read that. Uh, if you would, please. Uh, and then uh, I want you to look at, we're not going to, I'm going to tell you now, we might not get to all of this I'm giving you, but I want you to have some homework. And then Romans chapter eight, I want you to look at Romans chapter eight, verse 33 through 39. Romans chapter eight, 33 through 39. Uh, now we won't get to that. It's quite a bit of reading. That's why I gave it to you, but we won't get to that until we get to question number four. And depending on the comments from next week, uh, we possibly could get to question four because, again, these are questions, questions two, question three, and question four is for your participation and for you to expound on, all right, before we get to some hard teaching. Uh, so uh, uh, look at ver uh, question number three for next week as well. Question number three and look at question number four. We possibly may get to question three depending on how happy I get in, in my dissertation here. Uh, we might get to question three. I'm not certain. But Brother Jason, uh, Brother Jalen, go right ahead. You had you want to make a comment? Uh, yeah, Brother Miles, man. I was going to say, I don't know who Jason is, man. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, but uh, just to kind of back, because I, I could hear um, like to, what David was saying about 
just there's every season and the time and every purpose to under, to uh, under the heaven. You uh -huh. know, when I just everything all in all with uh with this uh uh scripture and the text, you know, everything that is saying like a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to weep, a time to laugh, um, just everything that it that is that it talks about in the scripture, when when it comes to my mind. It's like a form of unity, a form of just everything. Uh, like, sister, I believe in Sister Satchel saying everything in the world and like how you have now, like different denominations and different, uh, you got different people saying this and that. I feel like uh, it comes to my mind like a form of unity of all people, of time to do just just everything, a time to, to lose a time to keep time to cast away a time to bring things together. And it's just like, that's what I get when I, when I think about it. Please, yeah. Thank you so much. Ava. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. You were digging yes, in my sir. notes a little bit, but that's all right. I'll go back. We'll cover it. <laughs> all right. Uh, I have not forgot. We're over time. I have not forgot. I do have scriptures. The question came up, I believe it was Sister Junius that brought this up about will we know each other in heaven? I have some material on that I'm going to give to you all too, quite a bit of scriptures, uh, but uh, we'll talk about that because we are over time now. Now, uh, thank you so much. God bless you all. I commend you to God in the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the sanctified, Acts 20 and verse number 32. I'm asking you now if you will bow with me at this time for a word of prayer. Let's remember the sister, um, sister uh, Sinclair in our prayers for healing. Uh, let's remember little Max in our prayers for healing as well. Uh, and um, pray silently now, please, as I pray aloud. Father God, we come now once more and again, thanking you, Lord, for this day and thanking you for all blessings of life, thanking you for our health and for our strength thanking you for the provisions that you have given us, Lord. Father, we may not be able to run like we used to, but thank God we could still put one foot in front of the other. So we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Father, we're praying particularly tonight for those whom we love, we know that are facing challenges in their health and in their strength. We're praying for Brother Malik, Father. We know that he is going through some challenges and through some pains, Father. We ask you in the mighty sweet name of Jesus that you will please, Lord, remove any swelling, remove any pain, uh, remove any uh, challenges that's bringing him hurt and grief and harm. Heal his body from the crown of his head to the tip of his toes. We're praying for Sister Sinclair, Father, that you will touch and heal her body, Lord that you remove any pain that she's suffering with, Father. Father, we're praying tonight uh, for baby Max, David Jr. Father, that you will continue to touch and heal his body as well. Father, we're praying for our sister Angela, who may be facing some medical procedures, Lord, to correct and remove or to, to um, uh, bring an end to this excruciating pain that she's experiencing in her body. Father, I'm asking you to be with Angela. I'm asking you to be with the physicians, the nurses, the technicians, but do what they cannot do, and that is to preserve her life and to heal her body. Father, we're praying tonight for all of the bereaved once again, that you will give comfort. We pray a special prayer for Sister Elaine Russell, Father, and the Russell family, uh, for the Satcher family who just also lost uh, or have a buried of loved one, Father, and others. You know who they are. You know who stands in need of prayer. You know what they need and what they need it for. So, Father, we ask all of these blessings in your holy son, Jesus' name, trusting that we shall never die at the hands of man by mechanical failure or accident, but that we will simply sleep away in sweet peace and hear you say, well done in glory. This is our prayer now. We ask in your holy son, Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. God bless you. Unmute yourself.